Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. In this video, we are going to be testing the optics of a Gregorian type true telescope mirror that I got a few years ago. This is on very thick three quarter inch glass, very heavy, keeps a very good optical shape, designed for a secondary mirror to put the light down the center. These mirrors are very expensive. This mirror, if it was in mint condition, it's got some scuff marks on the surface, but if it was in mint condition, it would be worth a lot of money. We're going to be comparing it to the $3 trash can lid that I just put a couple more dents in. Um, in the previous video, I showed you how to make one of these. This costs less than a couple bucks. We're going to be using these as a telescope mirror. A lot of people have emailed me since I did the video on this saying, I've been working on telescope mirrors for years and I haven't been able to get the optics right. I have lots of optical aberrations. Optical aberrations with telescope mirrors are diversions of light that occur that distorts the image. You get blurriness, you get off streaking. This, as is, produces lots of optical aberrations. What I'm going to be doing now, I have a door with a clear glass area in it, sunny outside. If I shut the lights off, we get a nice area where light comes in. To do this, I'm going to be working off axis. So the image is still going to be a little fuzzy. The optimal imaging would be right here. But I can't do that, then the light wouldn't be able to come in. Telescopes put a small mirror there, they put a receiving lens. That's how it works. Or your camera screen sits there. If I take this mirror, this Gregorian mirror, and I go in, you can see an image start to appear. The closer I get, the further it focuses on images in the distance. I'm hoping that picks up, but that's what you get with the Gregorian mirror. If I go way over here off axis, because this mirror has a short focal length, the image gets super distorted. So we're going to be working over here, that way you can see more of the image, using our trash can lid and I will probably have to be readjusting the aperture on the camera that I'm using which is hooked to a computer right here so I can see what's going on in order to pick up the brighter objects versus the darker objects kind of balancing and exposure it's the same process the way that we draw a vacuum on this there's a small hole there so right now this should be as close to a flat mirror as possible I'm doing it this way get you a little lightheaded. You want to make sure all the vapors, any of the silicone, whatever sealants you use, let them cure for several days because if you inhale that you'll get, it doesn't feel great. It's not as cool as you think. The tighter the vacuum, the shorter the focal length, the more light is concentrated to a smaller area. Longer focal lengths produce wider patterns of light that are focused over a larger area. For telescope mirrors, telescopes are very expensive. The reason that we can do this has to do with the cost. If you make your own or you buy one, every bit of glass on this is very important. So you want the entire image to concentrate your light. You don't want to be doing like what cheap lens manufacturers do. You buy a 400, 500 millimeter lens setup for your camera might cost you a hundred bucks and you may notice that some of the lenses with the same focal length can be eighteen hundred to three thousand dollars has to do with the optics the more expensive lenses take advantage of the entire optical field that the mirror or the set of lenses produce they're generally a little bit larger and they have a lower f-stop rating or aperture they let more light in so you can take a more detailed image in low lighting situations like a football game that's why you see professional photographers on the side with the really big lenses if you take a regular lens that you buy for a hundred bucks off of a website that has four or five hundred millimeter it doesn't take the same exact pictures in very bright daylight the detail will be the same because you're getting so much light but when you're in like a dome stadium or you have lighting like this it drops and you can't take a picture longer focal lengths, you shake a little bit, you get blurry images. Same is true for telescopes. The larger the mirror, the more light you collect. The longer the focal length, the more zoom you get on the image that you're looking at. That's where the 
thousand millimeter, two thousand millimeter, ten thousand millimeter lens uh, telescope mirrors come in, or with camera lenses, fifty millimeters very short gives you a wide image of your whole family for Christmas. Zoom in tight to somebody at a party, two hundred millimeter. Our trash can lid. I would never thump that one this way because it would damage the surface more than it already is. But it's cheap. It cost us a dollar for the reflective surface. It's a first surface because if you look in the link below, you can see the difference between the first surface side and the second surface side. This is the big mirror video that we did. There's a little section in there that explains how mylar is conductive because it has an aluminum coating on one side. Same process that's used for the telescope mirrors. If we draw the vacuum on this and we focus it, we get an image that is eh, pretty good. Here's some of the results that we got. This is our trash can reflector. There are tons of smudges on the surface. Telescope guys would cringe at the thought of using one of these to image something. This is the mirror all by itself on the wall. I'm going to have to adjust the camera. This gathers a lot of light over the whole area. You have to adjust it accordingly. This is off axis, so the true parabolic mirror had trouble with this. There is the transformer that we're looking for. If I back up, I can see the wooden post. And if I back up more, there's the punching bag. Still not that impressive of an image. What I'm going to do is take this circle right here. This is a piece of cardboard. And we're putting it over the mirror like this. The optical aberration occurs at the outermost portion of the mirror. The center of any vacuum mirror usually has extremely good optics. So by doing this, we're creating the equivalent of an f-stop. First, we're going to go for the transformer. Seems to be washed out, so I have to speed up the shutter. That's a lot of light coming in. Not a bad image. Back up more for the post. There's the post outside, and the punching bag is right there. Now what we're going to do is take this piece of cardboard with this hole cut in it and put it over. It should be round. It doesn't have to be because it really doesn't make a difference, but this is going to be a tighter aperture. So we're going to do the transformer first. It's a nice clean image. May not be picking up well on the camera, but considering that our we're focusing on a piece of wafer board, it's not bad. Now that post in the front, not a bad image. That's how a store bought 800 millimeter lens would look like. And the punching bag. gives you a really sharp image. So you can see that by putting a shroud over this and choking our f-stop down, we can increase the image quality dramatically because all the optical aberration occurs on the outermost portion of our mirror. Any vacuum or water lens or just about any type of lens that you create, whether it's out of glass or liquid, whatever material that you use, the optical aberration usually occurs at the outermost portion. The inner portion is usually very, very, very good optics. So our material's cheap. We can make these huge and then take the optical aberration out with the use of a shroud to create the equivalent of an f-stop. We could take a 100-inch diameter mirror, bring it down to 50 inches or 40 inches. That's still a very big telescope mirror and it probably costs you less than 100 bucks to make. This 21 inch trash can lid has an effective range of about 8 inches so that is an 8 inch optical parabolic mirror. If you look at the prices of telescope mirrors small ones are inexpensive. You double their size you quadruple the price. Double that size 
quadruple, quadruple, and then it starts going crazy because each inch adds a couple pounds of glass, increases the optical precision, and the larger you go, the longer the focal length, the more precise things need to get. With a vacuum, it's static, it's continuous. Now you will have to adjust, if you make a telescope out of one of these, you will have to add something to adjust the vacuum. But if you're just taking snapshots of the sky, you can adjust the vacuum, let it settle as temperatures change, once it's in focus, take your delayed exposure. You could do detailed vacuum setups that keep the pressure just right for longer exposures. Or if you want to track the moon across the sky, you can get a little more intricate. But this takes the cost of the mirror out of the picture so you can focus on other things, other parts of your project. This is the results that we got just on a wall. In future videos, I'll be showing you how to take this and make it into a very powerful spotlight using a regular LED bulb or compact fluorescent. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.